In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to build and deploy a cloud function to AWS Lambda that calls off the ChatGPT to do some AI magic. The code's going to be in TypeScript, and we're going to be using serverless framework to deploy this. So it's not a huge change if you don't use AWS, you use Google Cloud or Azure. Serverless framework will make this relatively cloud agnostic. So this is what we're going to be building in our Lambda function. It's a simple function that can be called from an HTTP request, and then that goes off and asks ChatGPT to write a joke about some topic. We're going to be going HTTP request, cloud function, ChatGPT, and then back again and return the response. Now, there's a lot of reasons why you might want to be able to do this. Maybe you just want to add a bit of AI magic into your front end application. So you want an HTTP endpoint that you can hit that will build a prompt and call the API and return the response. Now, there's three parts to this tutorial. There's going to be creating and deploying the Lambda function in TypeScript. And we're going to be using serverless framework to help with that. And then we're going to be using the OpenAI NPM package to call the ChatGPT completions API from inside our Lambda. Finally, we're going to test it out by making an HTTP request from Postman to see this whole flow work from end to end. In order to follow along with this tutorial, you're going to need a couple of things first. You're going to need an account with AWS so that you can deploy your code to AWS Lambda. And you're also going to need an account with OpenAI so that you can call the ChatGPT over the API. If you already have both of these things, then great. If you haven't, then pause the video and head down into the description of this YouTube video where you'll find links for how to set up an AWS account, how to create your credentials for deploying AWS over the CLI, and there's also a link to OpenAI which you'll need to set up and get yourself an API key. Great. So assuming you have both of these set up and you have your relevant credentials stored on your machine, the next thing you'll need is an IDE. I'm going to be using Visual Studio Code, which comes with Node.js. And it also has a Node.js debugger, which could be handy. And we're going to be using the debugger for this as well. Then in your terminal, go into a new directory and just run npm init. This will create a package.json file. And in there, you can install TypeScript as a dev dependency with npm install dash d TypeScript. You also want to be creating a .env file in here for your local environment variables. When you create an OpenAI account, you'll get an OpenAI key. So you want to put your OpenAI key into that, um, into the .env file, and then add the .env file into git ignore. So here, um, this is to make sure that you don't um, accidentally check your API key into git or anything like that. OK, we'll come back to the API key later on. But first, let's create a blank AWS Lambda function using TypeScript, and we can deploy that to AWS. And to help with this, we're going to be using Serverless Framework. Serverless Framework is an open source tool for building and deploying serverless applications on cloud platforms like AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud. So the idea is to abstract away any of the infrastructure management. So that allows you to focus just on the code and writing your serverless functions. It also supports various plugins and extensions, and it has support for TypeScript, which we're going to be using in this tutorial. Now, you don't have to use serverless framework. You could just create a cloud formation template or even just log into the AWS console and paste the code in there. But serverless framework is a super, super simple way. It's one of the quickest ways to get up and running with serverless programming. And you can easily add more functions to this and build out an entire serverless API if you like in the future. So you install serverless framework globally with NPM like this. And then once you've done that, you can run SLS commands on the command line, like SLS dash dash version. Right, so the first step is to create a basic Lambda function in TypeScript. There's a couple of dependencies we need to add in to be able to do this. So run this command here, do npm install dash dash save, AWS Lambda, and OpenAI. And then we're also going to need some dev dependencies. So we're going to do npm install dash d, types AWS Lambda, types node, and this plugin serverless plugin TypeScript. So create a new file called serverless.yaml, and I'll just quickly talk you through some of the basic syntax for serverless framework. So the first thing we need to do is give our service a name. We call it Lambda Chat GPT, and we're going to use that serverless plugin TypeScript, which is going to allow us to do a TypeScript compilation as we do the deployment. Next up, we're going to use the .env file inside our serverless deployment. So what this is going to do is going to allow us to use this .env file that we created, and it will be accessible by process.env. Next, we're going to say that we're going to be using AWS, and we'll use a runtime Node.js 18. And then we're going to have a stack name. So serverless framework will create a cloud formation stack in AWS, and this is going to be the name of the stack that it creates for us. There's also going to be a region, 
And this flag here, version functions, it's possible in AWS to maintain multiple versions of your code after you deployed it, but we're not gonna bother with that because that's too complicated, so we're just gonna turn off version functions, which means every time we deploy this, it's just gonna overwrite the code that's in AWS. Next up, we've got a deployment bucket. So when this deploys, it uploads a bunch of assets to an S3 bucket, and our S3 bucket's gonna be called My Lambda Deployments. And then we're gonna add in this environment node, which allows us to declare some environment variables, which will be accessible to our AWS Lambda functions. So the environment variable will be OpenAI key, and we're gonna pull that from our env file. Um, in serverless framework, you can access variables from this env file by doing env colon and then the variable name. Great. So next up is let's create a handler for our AWS Lambda function. So what we put in here is gonna be the function that gets uploaded to AWS, and this is gonna be the entry point for our Lambda. So let's just create a basic Lambda function first. We'll import the environment variables from process.env. And we're just gonna create an async function, call it main, and we're gonna get an event from API Gateway and a context. And for now, let's just return a basic object that represents an HTTP status response. So here we're just returning an object with a status code and an empty headers array. Sorry, that should be process. <clears throat> Great. Um, we need to import these two types. So the API gateway event and the API gateway event request context are coming from the AWS Lambda types package. That's just a TypeScript thing. If you were using JavaScript, you wouldn't need any of these, but this is just so we can strongly type our API gateway event. API Gateway, by the way, is the wrapper that's gonna be put around this when we call it via HTTP. Great, so now let's go into serverless YAML and add in our new function. So we're gonna call our function getJoke and we're gonna pass in a reference to handler. So this here means take the file called handler and take the function called main. Um, and then by setting this URL flag to true, that's gonna tell AWS Lambda that we want to be able to call this function over HTTP. So it's gonna give us an HTTP endpoint that we can call with a URL. That's why it says URL. Great, so now let's go back into the handler and add some actual functionality into this. So I'm gonna import the OpenAI package from the NPM package that we installed. And then inside the function, we're gonna create a request body so that as you call this, you can pull this subject from the HTTP request. So we're gonna be calling this with a JSON object and that JSON object is gonna have a string field in it. And then inside our function, we're gonna to need to read that from the request. So we do json.pass event.body. What that will do is it will take the event body, which will be a string, and it will parse it into this type that we've just declared. Great. Now I'm just gonna jump out of that handler and create a debugger file that's gonna let us debug this locally in Node.js. One of the problems that people find with serverless computing, and this is essentially serverless programming, is it can be quite tricky to debug stuff because if you're constantly pushing your code to Lambda functions and cloud functions, then it's quite difficult to add debuggers in and attach debuggers remotely. So what I tend to do is just debug all this stuff locally with Node.js. So to do that, I'm gonna create a debug file um, and I'm gonna import my events into here. And I'm gonna import the main function from our handler. So that's gonna allow us to declare the uh, main function in here. And it will allow us to call the main function from just some local debugging as an API gateway event. And it will be asynchronous, so we put some catch in here and put a debugger statement in here as well, so we can pause execution if there's an error. Great. So this will allow us to open up our launch settings in VS Code, and I've got a separate video up here about how to debug TypeScript in VS Code, but it will allow us to execute our debug.ts file locally in the debugger. So I can actually do that now. I put a debugger statement in here. So if I had just go ahead and hit F5. Great, so we stepped into here with the debugger. What this will allow us to do now is locally call our main function. So if we test this out, we can step into here, and this will step into main, and you can see we passed in this event that's just got a body with a subject object in it. So we can just check that our parsing works. We can check that the body gets serialized, deserialized into this object with a subject, and then we can return the status code. There we go. Cool, so now we've got a really, really nice way of just debugging and stepping through our Lambda function locally before we deploy it to AWS. So now let's go in and actually do the chat GPT stuff inside this function. So this is where it gets fun. So what we're gonna do is just put a little bit of validation logic. So if we haven't passed in a subject, then we're gonna return a 400 status code that's just gonna say, 
Uh, it's just gonna have a message in there and it's just gonna say invalid request. So that's just to guarantee that we haven't um, you know, called this without any arguments or anything. And then to call OpenAI, we're gonna create a new instance of the OpenAI uh, class. And you can see in here, we're passing in the environment variable OpenAI key. I'm gonna create a prompt for OpenAI that just says, tell me a joke about whatever was passed in the subject. So to call OpenAI, we can do openai.chat.completions.create. And we're gonna pick a model. I'm just gonna pick GPT 3.5 Turbo. And in this messages array, we're gonna have one user message with that prompt in it. And then we're gonna take the result back from that GPT response, which is gonna be the first choice and the message and the content. ChatGPT always returns an array of choices and you always just wanna pick the first one generally. Um, and then that'll have a message property on it and that'll be a content. So the, the contents of this result variable will be basically. So if you're using ChatGPT on the UI, this is the equivalent of sending this prompt into the UI and getting this variable back. So what we want to do now is just return that result object, which we can do inside this object here in a body, just return that result. Great. So now if I step into this function again using our debugger, I'm just going to push F5 and start the debugger. Cool, so now if I use the debugger to step into our main function, you can see as before we've parsed this body argument and this should have the subject of trains. I'll step through, I'll create the new OpenAI instance and I'm gonna create a prompt that's gonna say, tell me a joke about trains. What we're gonna do now, as you can see, I'm awaiting this call, so this might take a few seconds. So if I just push F10 to step through this, that's now going off to OpenAI from our debugger and it's calling the OpenAI completions endpoint with this prompt, tell me a joke about trains. And you can see that the response, if I look in this result object, will be, why did the train go to the gym? Because it wanted to stay on track. So we can return our result from the API endpoint. And that's essentially the code done. We're going off here, we're calling OpenAI, we're using our prompt, we're getting the result back and we're returning our spot in the response from this HTTP endpoint. Great, so that's the Lambda function done. The next step is to deploy this to AWS. So you can see here, if I run this command, it's gonna create a CloudFormation stack and it's gonna deploy that to AWS. So if I log into my AWS console, you can see that Serverless Framework has created this CloudFormation stack for me. And if I navigate to AWS Lambda in the console, you can see that we've got our new Lambda function here. And if I log into the Lambda function, if I open that up, you can see that I've got a function URL provided for me by AWS Lambda. Now that function URL is what we're gonna put into Postman. So if I open up Postman and put in the URL and create a request body in here, and my request body, I'm just gonna give it the topic that we want to generate a joke about, and then click send. You can see that's gonna execute the Lambda and it's gonna come back with the response from ChatGPT. So it really is as simple as that. We've written our code, we've debugged it locally, and then we've deployed it to AWS. All right, today we've covered quite a lot of ground. We've seen how serverless framework simplifies the deployment process, and we've created a Lambda function in TypeScript that integrates with the OpenAI package to enable our Lambda function to call ChatGPT. Our function can now leverage the power of AI to generate a joke based on the input that it receives. Also, testing this using Postman, sending HTTP requests and receiving the AI-generated jokes in return. So this end-to-end -end test confirms our setup works when it's deployed to AWS. As you move forward, remember that the possibilities of this kind of stuff are endless. You can modify this setup to suit a wide variety of applications. Before we wrap up, I'd like to remind you to keep your API keys secure and always follow best practices for cloud security. And if you hit any roadblocks or have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments section below. I'll do my best to help you out. Don't forget to also subscribe to this channel for more content on cloud computing, on AI, and on programming in general. Also check out the additional resources in the video description for more in-depth information and further learning. My name is James Charles, this is the Train to Code YouTube channel and thanks for watching.